And what are you gonna do with this little dude? I mean, welcome to Feeding Your Finicky Feeders Friday. Whoa. Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you guys doing today? My buddy Ed was just here. He dropped off some paper. He'll be back, but he dropped off the paper that we had been talking about. He cut it for my retech stuff. Don't get too dark in here, Brian. Yeah. That's not doing much, is it? Anyway, so check it out. I think it looks pretty good in here. It's got a good feel, you know, it's, it's, it looks natural, it feels natural, and it is natural, so it's great. Then no more chemical paper in there. I did like my, my, my nose print, but if you missed the video where Ed was telling us all about this paper, you can find it in the link right here. I'm definitely happier with the snakes not being on chemical paper and being on just 100% natural paper. And it works good, I, I get to use less sheets of it. So I'm pretty stoked on how that's turned out. So guess, so today guys, we are going to be doing some cool stuff, including me showing you guys. Boys, what is going on? To cool it out. Gosh, can a guy talk around here? Hey, do I need to spray you again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Daddy. And Eli, if it's going to be. Yeah. Punishment doesn't work when you're enjoying it. Oh, man. There's a very specific request I had to do a show a technique, and I'm going to get into that a little bit today. Um, and hopefully, you guys will find something beneficial from it. Apparently, it's something that a lot of people don't really do too much successfully so but I have so we're gonna go over that and also hey Noah what what do you know I know tape measures what about tape measures that their number could go past 40 and the number can also go past 55. <laughs> Noah, what? what are tape measures good for? Measuring things. What kind of things? Like wood. And if you get cut by one, it hurts super bad. That's all I know. Eli, what do you know? I know. Rocking chairs. What about rocking chairs? That they walk and that's what I know. <laughs> you know that's not a rocking chair, right? Some days I just don't know what to do with these guys. But I do it anyway. Look at that pile of beauty. I found 100. You found 100? Yeah, look. Wow. And this is where our story takes a hard left turn. We're at my cousin's house and he may, or most likely, has a raccoon somewhere inside the house. We're hoping we can find it. How's the hunt going? Oh. Oh. A little bit at a time, man. A little hey, bit at a nice time. Hey, Michael. Hey. Nice to meet you, man. So, start from the beginning. Get up, go get coffee. Come in. This place is normally immaculate. I was torn through it. Found the paper towel holder. Knocked over. Sitting right like that. What's this guy? Poop! Makes the world go round. <laughs> Okay, so, so this is this is like plan this is, B. This is live trap. If if we have to 
set it tonight. She won't come home, which means we're getting a hotel. So nobody wants that. <laughs> I, ca I kind of want that. Discovery number two. Dose Dookie. More poop. Wow. And over here we got some piss. Mmm. Lovely yellow pee. Some right there next to your knee. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we got some paw prints along the edge. So, where, where do we think this thing is? In the house. Oh, somewhere. Geez. I went looking for open windows, open doors, openings anywhere to the house. There were none. So, the night before, Ward had run away again. And, uh... We left the house open so he could return. And we think he got, <laughs> could we get it just a little bit closer? Um, so Ward had run away. We left the house open so that he could return unhindered. And we think that maybe there was a dookie yesterday morning that Joanna found. So we locked him in. And he was here last night, already in, trying to find his way out. Getting <laughs> all over my house. Look at how nice this sign is, though. It's a nice big K for Cusco. You sure didn't jump out the door and then it's like sneaking back in, like like opening the door and then closing the like door. You like you got this door. Opening like the door. We got. So we, the doesn't we, kick we, on. Got, you got this door open over here. I mean, do you think I do it's now. Like, yeah. Do you think it stuck in? Like while you had or like snuck it stuck out? Out. And then it's coming back in. Do I don't an open. think so. <sighs> I don't think we got into the upper cabinet. It's not really a good through any growling. I don't see any secret passages. That remains closed at night, but that food dog was fed. But targets. Wait. That's last night and the house. I don't know guys, I've been pretty busy and I think he's just making something up so that I would come over and like rummage through his house with him because I, I haven't, we haven't had some good cuzzo time in a while. Did you find it? There it is, possum, oh, shit. right there. It's a possum? Yep. So, now. I didn't bring any gloves. That was a mistake. Um, there's that canvas tarp in the hall. Will you go grab that? Yeah. I had a feeling, because he was in right here in the kitchen, you know, is where you saw the last dropping. I started peeking behind there. I was just like, dude, it's got to be behind the oven. We got Ed on the ready with the tarp. Yeah, I'm ready. I think they're a little bit slower than raccoons, too. Yeah, a little, little less uh, vicious than a raccoon, too. That's lucky. They still have rabies, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate. I'm feeling very happy about the fact that this is a possum and not a raccoon. That's a baby one too. Yeah, he's just a little guy. All right, it's out. Everything that was living is still living. And what are you gonna do with this little dude? I mean. It's families out there somewhere. I know I looked out the window one night after the ducks capade and there was probably 20 eyeballs out there. So don't tell the missus, but he's going back out in the yard. Brian? <laughs> oh, but this, is this is how I see him doing in the movies. <laughs> they hang by their tails and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're just like a tree branch. All right, buddy, you ready to go home? Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. This concludes our segment of Mice and Men. Now I'm gonna go disinfect the house. 
So please leave a comment down below if you would hold a possum like that. Kind of gets a little creepy when it's trying to climb back up. Got some serious teeth in there, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to feed these baby snakes for their very first time. I had a very specific request to do a video showing how I get my snakes eating on frozen thawed for their very first meal. I start every single one of my ball pythons here on frozen thawed. 100% success rate to date. Not that I've done a bunch of them, which is probably why I've got such a higher success rate, but every single snake that I've hatched here, I have gotten started on frozen thawed rodents, which I'm sure everybody that ends up getting one of my snakes really appreciates, which is why I do it. My one hesitation in doing this is that I do have to do it in pretty low light. That's part of the procedure, is feeding at night, it is nighttime now, and feeding in very low light. So the the footage may not come out so well. I'm gonna try it anyway. First step is I thought out the rodents in the room all day long. There they are warming up right outside of the area where I'm gonna feed them. And I even set some rats right here, right outside the enclosures of the baby snakes that we're trying to feed. You can see that they're getting kind of excited already. And that's a really good sign. Baby snakes cruising out and checking things out and really wanting to get a little taste of that rat they smell out there. Now, I did leave all of these guys together still. That's gonna be a challenge. You can see they're all kinda still huddled huddled together in there. So my hope is that some of them are gonna kinda crawl forward and get a little more interested once the rat gets introduced. And that's the tricky part. You know, I'm gonna kinda offer food while they're still together and get it to one. Then when one grabs and wraps, then I'll put it into its own tub. That's the goal, that's the technique. Whether or not it's gonna work, well, I just have to see. That one's fed before, but now I'm just gonna let him. I'm just gonna leave it in there overnight and see if he takes it. Feeding the snakes in the dark just adds an extra level, especially when you're trying to feed a bunch at once and just get one of them to eat. It's kind of challenging. And for those of you that think snakes can't hear, fight me. So you can see that maybe they're not feeling it today. They did just shed out, so, you know, patience is another big key in getting it, getting the snakes to eat frozen thoughts successfully. Patience, patience, patience. So what I'll do is I'll let them stay together for another week, and we'll try this again next week. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, maybe I'll separate them out and put them, try to feed them again, put them by themselves in an enclosure, and leave a frozen thought in overnight. And then, you know, if that continues down the line, then maybe I'll try assist feeding, but we'll just kind of play it by ear and I'll take you guys along this whole journey of getting these guys to start on Frozen Thought. this tonight I'm sorry the feeding thing wasn't more successful but that's sometimes a thing as I mentioned patience patience is really key we're gonna keep going forward with it and hopefully you guys will get to see how successful it can be patience patience can't stress the patience enough man and the more patient you are the better off you're gonna be with this kind of process so I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful weekend and we'll see you back here on music Monday is a monster snake right there Thank you.